Strange but true historical events aren't always well known to the general population, especially outside the immediate area where the event took place. That doesn't mean they're not important stories in history, and sometimes they have an impact on us to this very day. Number 5 The Second World War is full of history stories that are strange but true. One of the weirdest of these stories is still not well known today, and that's of Juan Pujol Garcia. In 1942, British intelligence knew that there was a spy in Spain who was feeding the Germans information about their troop movements and the attitudes in Britain towards the war. Before we keep going, I've got to let you know about an awesome game I found. Hero Wars is a fantasy online RPG game with many different PvP modes. Right from the start, you can play through campaign mode, which has at least 130 missions to choose from. If you find all the chests of Dominion, you can find hundreds, maybe even thousands of coins on your first day. The story is also super captivating. You can finish missions, defeat different bosses, discover new techniques and characters, and level up your new heroes. At the moment, Hero Wars has more than 50 unique heroes to choose from, and you can use any of them to explore the Dominion. You can choose your favorites, create an unstoppable team, and defeat terrifying bosses. You can also check out the arena and fight other players online. The airship lets you send your heroes on expeditions to find amazing upgrades for your guardians. The outland lets you train while fighting bosses in unique ways. You can also play through the tower and fight against enemies every day of the week. By downloading Hero Wars, you'll be playing a game with more than 100 million people from around the world. You can also join the online community of more than 4 million people. Hero Wars is available now on both Android and iOS. Join the game now and get a super chest with a secret hero, as well as 600 emeralds and 30,000 gold. Scan this QR code and download the game from the link below in the video description. See you in the game. The reports were very convincing, even to the British, but entirely fake. It was a double agent, but the British had no idea who he was. That mystery was solved when Juan came forward. Juan was an unassuming Spanish civilian in his 30s. He'd fought in the Spanish Civil War, but claimed he never fired a single bullet, and grew an extreme dislike of totalitarianism. When he saw the rise of an ideology that he hated in Germany, he offered his services as a double agent to the British in 1939. He was turned down. Juan had no connections to Germany or Britain, didn't speak English, and didn't seem like he would be of any use as a spy. Most double agents tend to, at the very least, already be spies, and most don't enter such a complicated situation willingly. It would have been natural for the British to be skeptical of Juan. But Juan didn't give up his dream of being a spy for the British. Instead, he offered his services to the Germans. He claimed to be a member of the Spanish government who was heading on a business trip to London. He would be able to provide valuable intelligence to the Germans, and the Germans eagerly accepted. For years, Juan wrote authentic-looking reports about the UK based entirely on information gathered from magazines in his local library, advertisements about the country, and other publicly available information. Remarkably, this was enough to convince the Germans. By the time he approached the British again in 1942, he was a valuable asset. Juan played an important part in the D-Day invasion of Normandy. The Germans believed he had a network of almost 30 spies feeding him information, all of which indicated the Normandy invasion was a decoy. In fact, the network was entirely a figment of Juan's imagination. His information was so convincing that he actually managed to convince Germany's high command to turn around troops that were heading towards Normandy, because he insisted that the real fight would take place elsewhere. After the war, Juan moved to Venezuela, but feared his life was in danger due to the amount of German officers that had moved there. He faked his passing, leaving behind his wife and children in Spain, and would remain in hiding until the 1980s. Juan would eventually write an autobiography detailing the strange but true story of how he came to be decorated by both sides of the war. But it's a story that's still unknown to most today, despite its importance. Number 4 
The Raising of Chicago is a weird but true history story that takes place in the 1850s and 60s. It was an incredible feat of engineering to save a city that was sinking into the swampy area it was built on. Before this point, flooding came with every rainstorm and waterborne diseases infected one in every 20 people. Chicago had a choice to either abandon the city or lift it out of the swamp. Chicago was located only a few feet above Lake Michigan, and the water level was very close to the surface beneath the city. That meant that whenever it rained, the streets would become clogged with water and the mud would swallow people, horses, and buggies. A proper sewage and storm water system was needed, but there wasn't enough space between the street level and the water table for one to be installed. The decision was made to make the space. Over the course of several years, an incredible yet strange historical event took place. Streets, buildings, and entire city blocks were manually raised on jacks with thousands of workers pumping in unison to make sure the buildings remained level. All the while, the businesses that worked out of the buildings remained open. Other buildings were transported by rollers to the edge of town and replaced with more modern-looking buildings as Chicago tried to update its image as a city of the future. Eventually, the entire city was lifted between 4 and 14 feet into the air. New foundations were put in place, and the city finally got the sewage system it desperately needed. Chicago remains safely raised above the swampland it was once built on. New developments have taken place over the centuries, especially after the Great Chicago Fire, but all built on the foundations made during this historic event. Number 3 an unusual historical event took place on the streets of Dublin on the 18th of June, 1875. One of the most damaging fires that ever took place in the city took place that evening, with a river of flaming liquid spilling through the streets and causing everybody who touched it to catch fire. Homes and businesses were destroyed, but remarkably, nobody lost their lives due to burns or smoke inhalation. However, alcohol poisoning caused by the event was much more damaging. The Dublin Whiskey Fire began sometime before 8.30 p.m. at Malone's Malt and Storehouse at Chamber Street. The initial cause of the fire remains a mystery to this day, but before long, the heat was enough to cause the 5,000 barrels of whiskey stored there to erupt. The alcohol burst onto the streets, carrying the fire with it. Sources describe it as running like lava through the streets. Stopping the flow was a challenge because adding water to the blaze would only make the stream of alcohol flow faster. In the end, the fire department dammed the streets with a mixture of sand and horse waste until the liquid could not flow any further, and attention turned to putting out the buildings that were already ablaze. This wasn't a particularly well-off area, with lots of houses built very close together made of very flammable materials. Entire streets were completely demolished, and there was a fear that people would have lost their lives if they were trapped inside. Miraculously, everybody managed to get out. At the time, livestock like pigs lived in the streets, and it's thought the panic caused by the animals was one of the first alerts many people got. It's possible this strange history story could have been much more devastating without the animals. Word of the fire spread faster than the flames itself. People from across the city gathered with pots, pants, hats, and shoes to collect the spilled whiskey from the streets. Some even scooped up the burning liquid with their bare hands. Dozens of people were taken to the hospital with alcohol poisoning, and 13 people lost their lives. The fire was one of the most destructive in Dublin's history. The cost of the alcohol alone would be about 6 million euros in today's money, and the mayor set up a fund to help people who lost everything in the flames. It's definitely one of the strangest historical events that isn't discussed much today. Number 2 Strange and unusual causes for war have been scattered throughout history, but one of the strangest things to almost cause a devastating conflict was a gardening project. This project took place in the Joint Security Area that separated North and South Korea in 1976. The incident claimed the lives of two American servicemen and led to the laying of the military demarcation line that now clearly separates the two countries. 
Since the end of the war, the Joint Security Area was a small bubble where soldiers from both sides of Korea and the US operated. It was a surreal, intense environment during this period of history, as soldiers from either side were far from friendly with one another. But everyone knew that a small personal fight could snowball into something much bigger. The United Nations Command Checkpoint 3 was the closest checkpoint to North Korean territory and was described as the loneliest checkpoint. It was kept under the watchful eye of Operation Post 5, but between the two posts was a poplar tree. In the summer, when the tree was at full bloom, the checkpoint was almost completely obscured from view. The strange but important historical event began with the US and South Korean engineers being sent to trim the tree. As was the norm in this surreal environment, a small North Korean force appeared on the other side of the bridge of no return, where years later prisoners were exchanged and which today crosses the demarcation line. The North Korean lieutenant called for the trimming to stop and threatened violence. The American captain in charge ignored the threats. The lieutenant acted upon the threats. Heavy weaponry wasn't allowed in the joint security area. So the North Korean soldiers attacked with axes that had been dropped by those working on the tree. In a matter of minutes, they claimed the lives of Captain Arthur Boniface and platoon leader First Lieutenant Mark Barrett. Knowing that anything could trigger a full-scale war, the American and South Korean soldiers at the scene did not fire back. In Washington, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger and President General Ford debated what to do. Kissinger was in favor of fighting fire with fire and attacking the barracks of the perpetrators. In the end, cooler heads prevailed with what was dubbed Operation Paul Bunyan. The Americans and South Koreans returned to the site of the poplar tree with a tremendous show of force. Military aircraft patrolled the skies. Soldiers stood at the bridge of no return and it looked very much like they were prepared for war. On the other side, the North Koreans set up heavy weaponry ready to attack. In one of the weirdest operations in history, there would only be one casualty in Operation Paul Bunyan, that of the poplar tree. The tree was cut down to a stump. Despite the show of military strength, neither side attacked one another. Soldiers who were there that day believed there was a 50-50 chance this operation would cause the war to start up again. Thankfully, both sides walked away from the disaster after one of the most surreal and strange moments in history. Number 1 An important historical event took place near Simi Valley, California in 1959. It's not well known today but is still having an impact on those that live in the area. The partial meltdown of a nuclear reactor at an experimental facility had the capability of being worse than Chernobyl and is today believed to be one of the worst nuclear accidents the world has ever seen. Exactly how bad it was will possibly always remain a mystery due to the government cover-up. The accident took place at Santa Susana Field Laboratory. The laboratory was responsible for experimenting with different types of rockets that would contribute to the space race and those that grew up near the facility were used to the sounds of booms coming from the facility. It was also home to one of five experimental nuclear reactors that were built in the late 1950s. This reactor used sodium as a coolant for its fuel rods. Sodium was pumped in a one-way system past the 43 nuclear fuel rods that powered the generator. These rods needed to be kept cool, otherwise a meltdown would take place. The most common coolant these days is water or heavy water, but the facility used liquid sodium for the job. The pump itself also needed to be kept cool, and an oil-like substance called tetralin was used as a coolant. In late 1958 and the first half of 59, there were a number of incidents with coolant leakage being a relatively well-known problem, but the experiments continued. These experiment cycles were called runs. Run 13 took place at the end of June and the start of July, and temperature irregularities were noticed. The smell of tetralin was reported and it's believed the pump coolant was leaking, but the experiments continued. It was in run 14 that the partial meltdown really took place. Tetralin had seeped into the pipes that supplied liquid sodium and blocked the pipe. The sodium couldn't get to the nuclear rods and the rods weren't being kept cool. 
The run was eventually shut off before too much damage was done, but radioactive particles were released into the environment to stop a full meltdown. Repairs took place to the reactor, and the experiments eventually restarted a little over a year later, but no cleanup took place. The government insisted contamination hadn't been that bad, but whistleblowers 20 years later revealed the truth. Radiation levels at the site were thousands of times higher than background radiation. The area surrounding the field laboratory remains contaminated to this day. The companies that now own the areas are supposed to have it cleaned up, but there have been multiple pushbacks against this. In 2018, a forest fire burned through the area, and smoke and ash transported radioactive material into the communities that surround the site. Cancers in the area are unusually common, and it's believed this disturbing historical event and other small accidents at the site are still causing issues to this day. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts and I'll catch